What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Daniel, and welcome back to another video. Today, we'll be going into the future and predicting the 2025 NASCAR Cup Series driver lineup. Let's go just jump straight into it. Before that, though, you're probably going to notice that there are a lot of cars on the potential field for 2025. That's because I believe that by 2025, with a new manufacturer coming into the sport, I do believe that NASCAR is going to give out more charters. I think the charter system is going to continue being a thing in 2025. And I believe that the fuel sizes are going to expand in the 2025 season. So now, let's jump to it. Let's first start off with the one car for track house racing. I believe that this still is going to be continue to be driven by Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain in 2022 will be driving for track us racing, and Justin Marks has won in Ross Chastain on a scene for a very, very long time. I think that Ross Chastain will contend for wins by this point. He may be a surprise championship contender by this point. And I also think by 2025, track us racing will be a much better organization. I think he'll do very, very well as time goes on, and I think that at some point he will continue to be really good, and he'll drive the one in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the two car for Team Penske. There'll be no changes here at this point. I think that Austin Eric is going to continue driving the two car for Team Penske in the 2025 season. Austin Eric is the son of the is the son of president of Team Penske, Tim Sindrick. Tim Sindrick runs the IndyCar programs, also runs the Xfinity Series and Cup Series programs at Team Penske, and will continue running those operations, I believe, by 2025. Austin, I also think, will be a much better driver in the Cup Series than he is in his rookie year, and I think he'll do very, very well, and he'll continue driving the two-car for Team Penske in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the three-car for Richard Childress Racing. I don't expect any changes here either. I think that Austin Hill is going to continue driving the three-car for RSR in 2025. Austin Hill has been a, become a very, very solid contender, and I think he'll actually be a much more competitive driver as he does get older. Austin Hill will be in his mid-30s by 2025, and I think he'll have quite a few more wins on his resume and caliber. I think that RSR will be a team that will surprise a lot of people in the next-gen era, and I think that Austin Hill is going to continue driving. I think he's a really, really good driver. He'll be very successful, and I think he'll continue driving the three-car in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the four car for Stuart Haas Racing. Now, I think that Kevin Harvick by 2023 is going to retire. I think his last season is going to be 2023, which means that in 2024, I think that Ryan Priest is going to go there at least for one year in 2024 and go in for Kevin Harvick. But I think in 2025, I believe that Haley Deegan, yes, heard that right, she will jump officially up to the Cup Series in 2025. Haley Deegan in 2022 is expected to potentially run some, some select Xfinity Series starts in 2022 while running full-time in the Truck Series again in 2022. I think in 2023 and 2024, she'll be up in the Xfinity Series. She may make a few select Cup Series starts, maybe for a satellite team in 2024, but I believe that in 2025, she will officially go full-time. She'll be 24 at that point, and she does have that Moss Energy funding that has continued back her for her whole entire career, and that taught her sponsorship that has backed her for her whole entire career. So I think by 2025, Haley Dean will be officially up in the Cup Series, whether she's ready or not. I think she's doing a great job at taking more time to run in the Truck Series, but I think by 2025, she will be in the Cup Series in the four car. She is back in her place, Kevin Harvick, when he does retire, though. Up next, driving the five car for Hendrick Motorsports. This surprised nobody. I think Kyle Larson will continue driving the five car for Hendrick Motorsports. Now, Kyle Larson right now currently has a contract through 2023. HendrickCars.com basically spots him for every single one of those races, except a couple of them with that will spots him for the other races. However, Kyle Larson being a Cup Series champion now, I believe that he will get extended much longer than 2023. On top of that, Kyle Larson, I think, will get will win more championships. I think a Kyle Larson potentially could go back-to-back -back and be the first back-to-back -back champion in the system and be only the second driver to have multiple championships in the era of the playoff era, which right now only one driver has won multiple championships, and that, of course, is Kyle Busch. Kyle Larson is a very, very talented driver. I think he'll win at least 20 to 30 more races for sure by this point in 2025. He'll continue to drive in a five-car for Hendrick Motorsports in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the six car for Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing. There will be no changes here in the six car. I believe that Brad Keselowski will still continue driving in the Cup Series and in the six car in 2025. However, I do believe that Brad Keselowski is going to run his final full-time season in the 2025 season. I do believe that Brad Keselowski in 2022 is going to take a little bit of time to get used to running with the Roush Fenway RFK team. But by the time we get to 2025, 
I think he will be a championship contender again like he was at Team Pesky. And I think he's going to do very, very solid by 2025. Now, I think that he will be very surprising in 2024 and 2025. But I believe that Braggsaws, he will continue to drive in a six car. But it will be his final year in the Cup Series in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the seven car for Spire Motorsports. I do not expect any changes here. I believe that Corey LaJoy will continue to drive in a seven car in 2025. Now, Corey LaJoy right now only has a contract with Spire Motorsports through the 2022 season. But I think that Spire Motorsports really wants to build around Corey LaJoy. And Corey LaJoy, especially in the second half of the 2021 season, was really becoming a really impressive driver. And I do think that Spire Motorsports overall as an organization, I do believe that that team is going to continue being a really, really good organization going into the 2025 season. I think that they're going to be a much more competitive team. And I think we'll see them somehow contending overall for victories in the Cup Series field. And I think that we'll continue seeing Corey LaJoy drive the seven car in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the A car for Richard Childress Racing. I do not expect any changes here by 2025. I think that Tyler Reddick will continue driving the A car. If it really wasn't for Tyler Reddick, I don't think Richard Childress Racing would be in a much better position than they are now. But I think that Tyler Reddick has done an excellent job at RCR. I think he's been really close to winning races and also made the playoffs in 2021. And I think he'll continue being a driver that races in cup. I think for sure that RCR will back up into their championship ways. And I think that's going to come from a guy like Tyler Reddick. I think Tyler Reddick is a driver that has proven himself time and time again, knows how to get it done. And I think he'll be in a cup series for a very, very long time. And I think it will continue driving for Ridge Schultz Racing in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the nine car for Hendrick Motorsports. I do not expect any changes here. I think that Chase Elliott is going to continue driving for Hendrick Motorsports in the nine car in 2025. Chase Elliott right now only has a contract through 2022, but he is expected to sign a major, major extension with Hendrick Motorsports. It is potentially believed that he may sign a four to five year extension with the team, with potentially taking maybe possibly perhaps some ownership stake into the organization. However, he may end up getting, however, it's really unclear how long that contract will be though. But Chase Lee, I think, will have also a chance like Kyle Larson and his teammate. I do believe that Chase Lee will have a chance of being a much better driver in the Cup Series. And again, by this point, he'll be around 30 years old. And I think he'll win more races than people realize. I think at least for the time now, he'll get multiple wins in a season. But I think by 2025, he is really going to gel in the Cup Series. And I think he will do great as he will continue driving in the nine car for Hendrick Motorsports. Up next, we're going to talk about the 10 car for Stuart Haas Racing. I did not mention this for S. Stuart Haas Racing, but I also do believe that Stuart Haas Racing is going to be the first team that is going to switch to Dodge. I think they're making a move to Dodge, considering Tony Stewart is owning an HRA team. I think they will be the team that switches to Dodge. Now let's talk about the driver of the 10. Now the 10 car, I think, by 2023 and 2024... I do believe that the 10 car is going to, 2023 will probably be the last year for Eric on roll. And I think he's going to go to another organization in 2024. I think by 2025, whether you like him or not, I believe that Riley Herbst, yes, you heard that right. I think that Riley Herbst is going to be driving the 10 car for Stuart Haas Racing in 2025. Whether you like him or not, think if he's good or not, he has the funding and the sponsorship to help him out. He's got to some point win the Xfinity Series, right? He did not win a race. However, like I said, he has the funding and the sponsorship. And maybe he'll be able to improve himself before he gets up to the Cup Series. I mean, I'm not really expecting that from Riley Hurts. Don't get me wrong. But I think by 2025, I believe that Riley Hurts will be in the Cup Series. And I think that will be with Super Haas Racing for 2025. And I think it will be his rookie year in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 11 car for Joe Gibbs Racing. I don't expect any changes here either, despite Denny Hamill's age. I believe that Denny Hamill will continue driving for Joe Gibbs Racing. However, similar to um, similar to Brad Kozlowski, I believe that 2025 is going to be the last year for Denny Hamill before he fully goes into the ownership side, working with 2311 Racing. I think Denny Hamill is, I know he's been a little bit outspoken about the next-gen car, but I think that Denny Hamill will still be pretty similarly competitive, at least for the next years before he starts falling off. And I think that Denny Hamill, especially with him basically having to take care of his young children, I think that he's going to want at some point go more to the ownership side of things. Now, Denny Hamill may at some point after 2025, he may make select starts. But I think at least for his final season in 2025, I think he will do very, very well. And I think he'll do a great job as he will continue driving the 11 car for Joe Gibbs Racing in that season. 
Up next, we're going to talk about the 12th car for Team Penske. I don't expect any changes here either. I think that Ryan Blaney is going to continue driving the 12th car for Team Penske in 2025. Now, it is believed that Ryan Blaney does have a contract with Team Penske through 2023. However, I would expect that he will get extended at least for quite a few years with Team Penske. In 2021, Ryan Blaney became the factory driver. That team became the best driver at that organization and really became a leader of that team and was also able to make it to the right of it along with the teammates Brad Soski and Joey Logano. And I think that Ryan Blaney is going to start having not just one year of multiple wins, but I think going forward, he's going to win more than one race in a season. I think he will also be a championship contender as well, long down, way down the road. And I think he'll start winning even sometimes maybe four or five race win seasons. I expect that to be the case. And I think that Ryan Blaney will continue driving the 12th car for Team Penske in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 13 car for NBM Motorsports. Like Stuart Haas Racing, I expect NBM Motorsports to switch over to Dodge as well to try to be one of the higher teams up on the totem pole and try to get more of a competitive edge. And I think the 13 car is going to be driven by Garrett Smithley. Now, this 13 car is not going to be a full-time car. I think that this car is going to run in a partial race. I think it's going to run 12 to 15 races in the 2025 season with Garrett Smithley. Garrett Smithley has driven for NBA Motorsports in the Cup Series in the past. Yes, I know he's driven for Rick. We're racing. But I do believe that Garrett Smithley will continue to have a partnership with the NBA Motorsports camp. I also can see guys like Chad Fitch of going into this ride, perhaps. But I think that Garrett Smithley will drive in the 13 car for NBA Motorsports in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 14 car for Stuart Haas Racing. I do not expect any changes here. I think that Chase Briscoe will continue driving the 14 car. Now, like I mentioned about Stuart Haas Racing going to Dodge, I think that there is a possibility that he may leave the team because he has had four backing. But I think that Chase Briscoe and Tony Stewart really like each other a lot. And Tony Stewart's probably been a good mentor for Chase Briscoe throughout his entire career. So I don't expect any changes. I think Chase Briscoe will have a lot of wins in the Cup Series by 2025, and I think he'll do very well as he continue driving, continues driving for Stuart Haas Racing long way down the road. And I think he'll continue driving the 14 car for Stuart Haas Racing in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 15 car for Rick Ware Racing. I think Rick Ware Racing will also be another team that is going to switch over to Dodge in tw by 2023 or 2024, since they have Dodge backing in the Penny Series, and they are having SHR Alliance in 2022, I think by 2025, they will have an alliance with SHR and move over to Dodge. And I believe that in 2025, the 15 car is going to be driven, once again, by James Davison on a full-time basis. I think James Davison deserves a really good opportunity. I think he's a really, really solid driver. In 2021, he did pretty well. And I do think that James Davison, with a much more competitive car, with there only being a few cars in 2025, I believe that James Davison could be driving to surprise a lot of people in the Cup Series. And I think that he'll do very, very well. And I believe that he'll drive the 15 car for Ricker Racing in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 16 car for Colleg Racing. I do not expect any changes here. I think that Just Henley is going to continue driving the 16 car for Colleg Racing in the 2025 season. Just Henley, I think, will be pretty competitive in the Cup Series in 2025. Colleg Racing is a team that I think is going to be expanding to multiple cars in 2025. We know they're going to run two in 2022, but I think that they'll be a multi-car team. And I think that Just Hilly will become a much more better driver in the Cup Series. And I think that he'll contend for wins like a lot of drivers. I think he will contend for wins. And I think that he'll do very, very well as he drives in the 16 car for their team in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 17 car for Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing. I do not expect any changes here. I think that Chris Buescher will continue driving the 17 car for Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing. Chris Buescher, I think, will be a driver that surprised a lot of people long time down the road. He's a driver that I think has been very underrated in the Cup Series. He does have one win in his Cup Series career. That, of course, coming in a rain-shortened victory, actually a fog-shortened victory at Pocono. And he actually was pretty good in 2021. And I expect that with Brad coming into the team, a driver that can really come in there and mentor him, I think he'll do very, very well. We know that he has probably a contract likely through 2024, but I do expect that he will get extended long-term with their team down the road. So I think that Chris Buescher will continue driving his 17th long-term down the road with Roush and with Keselowski Racing. Up next, we're going to talk about the 18 car for Joe Gibbs Racing. There's going to be no changes here either. I think that Kyle Busch will continue driving the 18 car for Joe Gibbs Racing. 
Kyle Busch is a driver that I think is going to get back on track with the next-gen car. I think he's going to be more competitive. I think talent is going to matter a lot more with it. The last couple of years, Kyle Busch has been a little bit down for his standards. Now, Kyle Busch, I think it's going to start continue, considering retirement by the 2025 season. But I think that Kyle Busch, for sure at least, is going to run a few more years after 2025 in the 18 car. Question is, will he still have the same crew chief at Ben Bayshore by this point? That's one thing that is going to be determined. But I think that he will do very, very well by this point in 2025, and he will continue driving the 18 car in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 19 car for Joe Gibbs Racing. This car, I think, is going to be driven. I think Mark Trex Jr. is going to retire in 2023 from full-time competition. I think he gets one more. Mark Trex Jr. will run in 2022 and 2023 in this 19 car. And then, then I think that Ty Gibbs, who is a grandson of Joe Gibbs, is eventually going to get jumped up to the Cup Series in the number 19 car. Ty Gibbs, I think, will win a championship in Xfinity in 2022. And I think he will do very, very well in the Cup Series. I think he's a driver that's going to surprise a lot of people. I think he's been the best prospect we've had in NASCAR since probably either Kyle Larson or Joey Logano. And I think he's going to do very, very well. And I think he's actually going to win races. And I think he's going to surprisingly contend for championships at a very, very young age in the Cup Series. And he may be, before all we know, potentially the first rookie to contend for a championship since Jimmy Johnson did it back in 2002. I think he's going to do very, very well in the first few years, and I think he'll do very good. As I think he'll drive the 19 car for Joe Gibbs Racing in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 20 car for Joe Gibbs Racing, the final car for Joe Gibbs Racing. I do not expect any changes here. I think that Chris Bell is going to continue driving the 20 car for Joe Gibbs Racing in 2025. Chris Bell is a driver that I think is only going to get better in the Cup Series by 2025, and I think he will continue working with Adam Stevens by 2025. Chris Abel will be around 30 years old by this time. And like I said, I do think that Chris Abel is only going to get better in the Cup Series. He's a driver, I think, especially with the next-gen car. I think he's going to do extremely well, and I think he's going to do well enough. So I think Chris Abel will do great in 2025. I think he's a very talented and a very, very solid driver. And I think he will continue driving the 20 car for Joe Gibbs Racing in 2025. Up next, we are going to talk about the 21 car for Wood Brothers. I do not expect any changes here. I think that Harrison Burton is going to continue driving for the Wood Brothers organization in the 2025 season. Harrison Burton will be going to Wood Brothers in 2022, and I think his rookie year is going to be a little bit out of sorts. I think that they're going to have a worse average finish and a worse points finish than Matt Benedetto did, Matt Benedetto did in 2021. However, it's not a bad idea to move him up to the Cup Series considering it is a new car and everyone is starting off on an open, even playing field. Plus, I do think that Harris Suburban is actually going to do pretty solid as time goes on in the NASCAR Cup Series. I think he will end up winning races, and I think Wood Brothers will do very well. Plus, of course, he's got that Dex Imaging sponsorship that he's had pretty much his whole entire career, whether it's been an ARCA, whether it's been with Xfinity, trucks, whatever sponsorship he's had. He's had Dex Imaging with him, and I think he will continue driving for Wood Brothers long term in the 20s. One car. Up next, we're going to talk about the 22 car for Team Petsky. I do not expect any changes here by 2025. I think that Joey Logano will continue driving the number 22 car for Team Petsky. Joey Logano has a contract right now through 2023. However, I do think that he will get extended for a long period of time. I think Joey Logano is going to get a pretty long extension. I think minimum four to five years. And I think he will finish his career in the NASCAR Cup Series with Team Petsky. Joe Logano has done extremely well throughout his NASCAR Cup Series career. I think it will surprise a lot of people with the next-gen car. I do think at least for next year, though, I think he's only going to get one win in 2022. But I think he'll get back to his championship caliber form at some particular point in the next few years. And I think he'll continue driving the 22 car for Team Petsky in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 23 car for 2311 Racing. This should surprise nobody. I think Bubba Walsh is going to continue driving the 23 car for 2311 Racing. This team, of course, is built around Bubba Walsh. But I do think that Bubba Walsh is going to surprise a lot of people long-term down the road with the next-gen car. On top of that, I think that Bubba Walsh is, like I said, it's only going to get better. I think he's actually going to win not just on super speedway tracks, but I think he's going to start winning multiple races in a season. As 2311 racing with Kurt Busch coming into the team, I think they're only going to get better. On top of that, I think Kurt Busch is actually going to become integrated into 2311 racing as like an advisor and stuff and work with Denny Hamlin and help their team become very, very well and be a driver that can give advice to Bubba Walsh and help him out as a race car driver. But I believe that Bubba Walsh will continue driving the 23 car long term. I think he continues to drive the 23 car. Up next, we're going to talk about the 24 car for Hedger Motorsports. 
While it's not been confirmed 100% for how long the extension is for William Byron, I believe that William Byron will continue driving for Hendrick Motorsports in 2025. I think that he does have a contract for another six years at Hendrick Motorsports. I think Liberty University signed a six-year extension with the team, which means William Byron, I think, minimum will be this team through 2027. I think William Byron is going to only get better as time goes on as a driver. I think we really, this past year in 2021 especially, I really think we got to see the first glimpse of how good of a driver William Byron actually is. But I think that he's only going to get better. And I think by 2025, we may end up seeing him winning the Asker Cup Series Championship. I think he'll get multiple wins in 2022. And by 2025, he'll still be working with Rudy Fiegel. And we'll still be working, both of them will still be working together. And I think that William Byron will continue driving the 24 car for Hendrick Motorsports in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 25 car for GMS Racing. I believe that GMS Racing is going to expand in the 2025 season. And I think that the first of the three cars that GMS Racing is going to have is going to be driven by Zane Smith. Now, hear me out when I say this. I do not think that Zane Smith is going to return to GMS Racing in 2022 in the truck series. However, I think that with the driver's edge program still being a thing, I think that he still is going to be part of that because GMS Racing is part of that driver's edge program. And I do think that Zay Smith at some point is going to make that turnaround to return to the NASCAR, to return to GMS Racing in a couple of years, maybe back in the truck series, perhaps in 2023 with their team. And then maybe GMS Racing does make the return to the NASCAR Xfinity Series. But some way, in some way how, I believe that they are going to, he's going to return to their team, and I think that he'll drive for GMS Racing on a full-time basis in the Cup Series. I know that he probably may get back sooner than we think to the Cup Series and maybe up to the Xfinity Series at some point, but I believe that Zane Smith will drive the 25 car for GMS Racing and their expanded team. Up next, we're going to talk about the 26 car for GMS Racing, the second of the three GMS cars. I believe that this car is going to be a multi-car, is going to be between two drivers for 2025. I believe that Jack Wood is going to drive the 26 car in the NASCAR Cup Series in that 26, and I believe that Anthony Alfredo is going to drive it. I think Jack Wood is only going to run 10 to 12 starts for their team, and Anthony Alfredo is going to take a majority of the season. Now, we know that Anthony Alfredo, he is not returning to the number 38 for Front Row Motorsports. However, I do think at some point Anthony Alfredo will make his way back to the Cup Series with what team, I really do not know. But I think by 2025, he'll be integrated into the GMS. He does have that sponsorship that really helps him, which I think will overall help. And I think that him going back to Xfinity and going back to trucks will only make him a much better driver. I think he got rushed up way too quickly. And by this point, I think he'll be one of the drivers in their program. The other driver talk about Jack Wood. Jack Wood, in my opinion, I, I know that Jack Wood really has not been impressive in his select start in his full-time season in trucks. But I think that Jack Wood will eventually get promoted to the Cup Series with GMS Racing. Of course, that driver's edge program is really going to help them out to him getting up to the Cup Series. And I think that he'll be the second driver at their team. I'm not expecting really flashy starts from Jack Wood once he does eventually do get up to the Cup Series. But I think that Jack Wood will drive in the Cup Series in 26, but only on a part-time basis before eventually jumping into running on a full-time basis in the 2026 season. But I think that Jack Wood will drive on a part-time basis with their team in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 27 car for Team Hasbro. Team Hasbro will be joining the Cup Series in 2022, and I think the 27 will, once again, no surprise, I think that Larice Hazeman is going to drive this number 27 car. I think a Team Hasbro eventually will be a full-time team. I think in 2022, they're going to be a part-time team. By 2025, I think that they will have an alliance with an organization, whether that's with Frost Family Racing or whether that's with Front Row or another team like Stuart Haas Racing. I think that they will have a partnership with them. They're expected to be a four-team in 2025, though they could change manufacturers and go to like Chevy or go to Dodge or go to Toyota. But I think Aris Hasman is a very, very talented and a very gifted driver. And I think he's going to surprise a lot of people in the Cup Series. And I also think Jacques Villeneuve will be a mentor on the Team Hasbro organization in the Cup Series. Well, by this particular point, I think they'll surprise a lot of people. And I think that we'll see Larice Hasman drive the 27 car. Up next, we're going to talk about the 31 car for Richard Chillis Racing. Yes, you heard that right. I believe that Richard Chillis Racing will be a three-car team by the 2025 season. And I believe that Sheldon Creed is going to drive the 31 for Richard Chillis Racing. Sheldon Creed will be with RCR, I think, for a few years in Xfinity. I don't think that there's going to be any room open for him to jump up to the Cup Series in, until around 2025. But I think that Sheldon Creed is a driver that's going to do really, really well in Xfinity and contend for championships in that respective series 
with RCR. The combination of Austin Hill and him just is going to work very, very well in 2025. And I think this Sheldon Creed, when he does jump up to the Cup Series, I think he is going to surprise a lot of people. I think he's a good driver. I think he knows what he's doing. He's won a Truck Series championship. I think he's a driver that is a generational talent. And I think he'll do very well in the Cup Series with them. Unclear if the wheel and sponsorship will come up with him to the NASCAR Cup Series. But I think 100% we're going to see them expand to a three-car operation. And I think that we'll see him drive the 31 for RCR Racing. Up next, we're going to talk about the 32 car for 2311 Racing. I also expect the 2311 Racing will be a three-car operation. And I think that the second car, the 32, is going to be driven by John Hunter Nemechek. Now, John Hunter Nemechek, I think, really wants to make it back up to the Cup Series. And I've been theorizing for a very, very long time that I think that when he does come back up to the Cup Series, I think that that is going to be with 2311 Racing. 2311 Racing, I think, will like a guy like John Hunter a young driver who's shown flashes of brilliance in the truck series. He made that move from Front Row Motorsports in 2020, moving over to Kyle Busch Motorsports. Had the best season of any driver. It's a shame that he had that flat tire and that bad call, pitch strategy call from the team. But I do believe that John Hunter will go back to Xfinity at some point, now with 2311, I think with Joe Gibbs Racing. And I think that multiple guys in that team are going to eventually get back up the cup. But I believe that John Hunter Nemechek will jump up to the Cup Series with 2311 Racing in the 32 car. I think it happens. And I think he'll win a Truck Series Championship in 2022, jump up to Xfinity. And then I think he'll jump up to the 32 for 2311 Racing in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 34 car for Front Row Motorsports. I also expect Front Row Motorsports to be a multi-car operation in 2025, at least a three-car operation. And the 34 car is going to be driven by Michael McDowell. Now, Michael McDowell will be in the latter status of his NASCAR Cup Series career. But one thing I'm going to say about Michael McDowell is I think that Michael McDowell is exactly a driver that has gotten better as time has gone on. And I can see Michael McDowell being a top 10 consistent driver as the years progress as he gets to the latter stages of his career. Now, I do think that he right now in 2022 is going to be in the latter stages of his career. But I think that he's done a great job at Front Row Motorsports. And I think he's been one of the big reasons why this team has been getting better and better as the years have gone on. And I know he's one of the race with the next gen car. And I think that this will be one of his final seasons in the NASCAR Cup Series. But I do believe that Michael McDowell will continue driving the 34 car for Ferrari Motorsports in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 36 car for Ferrari Motorsports. I believe that Eric Almarola is going to leave SHR in 2023, and I think he'll go to 38 in 2024. Then in 2025, with the promotion of another driver we'll talk about, I think that he is going to drive the 36 car. However, I think that this is only going to be on a 24 race basis. I think Eric Amaral is going to run his final full-time season in 2024 with the Front Row Motorsports Camp, which I think is expect I think will actually happen. And I think that he'll drive this car with 24 races. I think Eric Amaral will not have enough sponsorship. I do think that Smithfield is going to come over with him over to Front Row Motorsports. I think that's one thing they'll be looking at as sponsorship. But I think that Eric Amarillo eventually is going to get over to Front Row Motorsports, and I think he'll drive the 36 car. I think Eric Amarillo, like I said, this will actually be Eric Amarillo's also his final year as a whole in NASCAR Cup Series competition. I think he'll make select truck starts and Xfinity Series starts by this particular point, but I think Eric Amarillo will drive the 36 car. This car will not be chartered, so he'll have to qualify for sure, qualify into the races, and I think that he'll drive the 36 car for Front Row Motorsports in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 38 car for Front Row Motorsports. This one is probably not going to surprise a lot of people, but I think that the 38 car is going to be driven by none other than Todd Gillen. Todd Gillen, of course, being the son of David Gillen, who has had a representation with the Front Row Motorsports camp. They do in the trucks, they did in the truck series in 2021. They did feel basic, they basically feel uh, Front Row cars basically had DGR equipment, and they performed ex pretty, pretty well, where Todd Gillen made the playoffs, but unfortunately got eliminated in the first round of the NASCAR Truck Series playoffs. But ever since he's gotten over to that team, I think that Todd Gillen has not only become a much better driver, and I think he's done very, very well. I think that Todd Gillen will go up to the Xfinity Series, and then eventually by 2023 or 2024, he'll jump up to the Cup Series. Whether Todd Gillen will go to front row, it's really unclear. But I do believe by 2025, I think that Todd Gillen will jump up to the Cup Series. I think he'll be in the cars, and I think that he'll drive in the Cup Series in the 38 for front row motorsports. Up next, we're going to talk about the 40 car for Chip Ganassi Racing. Now, this one's going to be really, really controversial because we know the Chip Ganassi Racing after 2021, they are leaving the Cup Series. 
However, I do believe that in 2025, by 2024, 2025, I think that they are going to make their return to the Cup Series, whether that's on a part-time or full-time basis. That's a big question. But I do believe that in 2025 that they will come back to the Cup Series. Now, what driver do I think that they are going to pick up? This one will shock you, but I believe that Austin Hill, yes, heard that right, I think Austin Hill is going to drive the 40 car for the team in 2025 when they do make the return to the NASCAR Cup Series. Austin Hill will be with RCR for a couple of years, and I think that they will have a partnership also with Richard Childress Racing, which will really, really help him come over to the team. On top of that, United Rentals has sponsored Austin Hill for quite a few years in the NASCAR Truck Series, and I think they're coming up to the Xfinity Series as well, if I'm not mistaken, to sponsor him. So I think that the 40 that Chip Ganassi Racing makes his return by 2024. I think they'll be a Dodge the first year, and then I think they'll transition over to Chevy in 2025, and I think that they will pick up Austin Hill to run on a part-time basis or even a full-time basis, perhaps, in the Cup Series once again in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 41 car for Stuart Haas Racing. This should surprise nobody. I think that Cole Custer is going to continue driving the 41 car. And this is because of family ties. Joe Custer, is, who's the father of Cole Custer, has been the president of Stuart Haas Racing for quite a few years. Really think since around 2011 and 2012, he's been the president. And Cole Custer has driven for their team. The big question for Cole Custer is, can he perform better than he has had so far in the NASCAR Cup Series? That is going to be the big question long term. But I think that Cole Custer will continue driving the 41 for SHR. I think he continues driving them as they are over at Dodge. And I think that he'll continue driving the 41 for Stuart Haas Racing in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 45 car for 2311 Racing. I think Kurt Busch is going to run his final full-time season in 2023. And I think in 2024... Brandon Jones is finally going to get promoted, and I think he will be driving the 45 car in 2025 with 2311 Racing. Brandon Jones has been in the NASCAR Xfinity Series for a very, very long time, and I think at some point it will be he will eventually jump up to the Cup Series. And like I said, I think that is going to be with the 2311 Racing Camp, considering Joe Gibbs Racing is not going to have any spots available, I believe, by 2025, considering Joe Gibbs Racing is probably going to want to promote his grandson, Ty, up to the Cup Series by that point. So I think that Brandon Jones is going to go to a Toyota affiliate, and I think the only suggestion I have is going over to 2311 Racing in the 45 car. Now, I think that Brandon Jones has done pretty well in Xfinity, and I think he'll surprise a lot of people in the Cup Series, and I think that he will drive the 45 for 2311 Racing in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 47 car for JTG Doherty Racing. I do not expect any changes here by 2025. I think that Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is going to continue driving this car in 2025. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., I think, is a driver that has gotten better as the time has gone on. I know this time of Roush Jimmy Racing has not been really, really good, but I think that his time at JT Doherty Racing, the fears that he has ran with the team, I do think he's actually been pretty, pretty well, and it's done pretty well, and it's been pretty impressive. So I do believe that in 2025, he'll continue driving the 47 car. I think especially with Tabloid coming over to that team, I think he'll do very, very well with a good spotter. I think he continues driving the 45, 47, and I think he will do very well in that 47 car in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 48 car for Hendrick Motorsports. I do not expect any changes here. I think that Alley is going to extend her sponsorship with Hendrick Motorsports for at least a few more years, probably around 25 to 2026, which means that I think that Alex Bowman is only going to continue driving for Hendrick Motorsports in through at least for sure the 2025 season. Alex Bowman, like I said, has a contract through 2023, but I think of how good Alex Bowman has been in the Cup Series. I know he's been inconsistent with Henry Motorsports in 2021, but I mean, he still got four victories in 2021, which is really, really impressive. And I think that he will be a championship contender like a lot of drivers will be in the 2025 season. So I think Alex Bowman will continue driving this car. I think he'll do very, very well. And like I said, I'd like to see Alex Bowman continue driving. Maybe he gets a new crew chief. That's one thing I'm really interested to see if he will get a crew chief long term down the road. But I think that we will continue seeing him drive in 2025 in the number, in, for sure, in the number 48 car for Hendrick Motorsports. Up next, we're going to talk about the 51 car for Rick Ware Racing. I think, like I said, Rick Ware Racing is going to be a multi-car organization. I think they'll be a three-car organization by 2025. And I think that Matt DiBenedetto, yes, you heard that right. I think that Matt DiBenedetto is going to continue driving the 51 car in 2025. 
I think that Matthew Mendoza has a very strong shot in 2022 to getting into the 51 car, but I think one thing that really can help Matthew Benedetto is if Nurtech ODT stays around. So I think Nurtech ODT is going to be the big reason if Matthew Benedetto gets into the ride, which I think it is going to happen. I think that he is going to drive this car in 2025. I think he'll be back in the Cup Series in this ride in the partnership. And I think that he will drive the 51 car, which won't shock me. And I think he'll drive the 51 car in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the final Rick Ware Racing car, the 52 car. This car is going to be the car of multiple drivers. And I think there are going to be three drivers, actually four drivers, that are going to split this ride. It's going to be a mixture of Josh Balicki, Joey Gase, who's going to be starting the Xfinity Series program, Cody Ware, who probably runs some IndyCar starts, and J.J. Yaley. I think Josh Blickey will get a huge portion of the season because Josh Blickey will be mainly focused on running in the Cup Series, while the other three drivers will split on a part-time basis. Now, maybe when Joey Gase comes in, he may run his team, perhaps, in the NASCAR Cup Series, may run that as his own partnership, but... I believe there'll be a mixture of four drivers in those cars. That's what I'm expecting. And I think it does will be the drivers who will get into the 54 car, 52 car in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 61 car for Colleg Racing. I think that this car will, in 2021, when 2022, we know there's going to be multiple drivers, AJ Allmendinger. I think that the other, the driver though, that is going to be, is going to be the other driver. And I think that the 61 car is going to be driven by, you guessed it, Daniel Hemmerd. Daniel Hemmerd in 2022, he'll be moving over to Colleg Racing. And I expect that he is one of the drivers that is rumored to potentially make a potential Cup Series starts in the 2022 season. And I think eventually he will go full-time in the 61 car, probably around 2023 and 2024. And I think he'll go full-time with the team. I think he's a driver 100% that deserves a second chance. He's earned that second chance, won the Xfinity Series Championship in 2021. And by 2025, I believe 100% that he will drive the 61 car for their organization in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 62 car for Beard Motorsports. Beard Motorsports, I still believe, will be in the Cup Series by 2025. And I think that they're not just going to run super speedways in 2025. I think they're also going to run some short tracks and maybe some intermediate tracks in 2025. And I think that there is going to be a split of drivers that are going to drive this car. I think it's going to be Carson Hosovar and Tyler Ankrum. I think Carson Osbar is going to run the short tracks and the intermediate tracks. And I think that Tyler Ankrum is going to run the super speedways in 2025. Hear me out when I say this. I think Beard Motorsports is going to become part of the Driver's Edge program. They've had drivers from the Driver's Edge program like Noah Grayson in their organization. And yes, I know both these guys are not from Las Vegas. That being said, though, I believe that Tyler Ankrum and Carson Osbar, two guys that are upcoming through the ranks right now, I believe that they'll be the two drivers that will drive for the Beer Motorsports Camp in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 66 car for MBM Motorsports. I think that this car also will be a Dodge like the 13 car. And I think that they have a chance of getting a charter in 2025. I think they will be a full-time team with the 66 car. And I think that there will be one driver that will be in this car. And I think that is going to be Timmy Hill. Timmy Hall has been basically the flagship driver of the NBA Motorsports cars for the last couple years in the Cup Series. He ran a lot of the Cup Series season in 2021, and I think that they will run select starts in 2022 for eventually potentially going full-time in 2023, and then perhaps in 2024, they will run more select races. But I believe that Timmy Hill will potentially be a full-time driver by 2025 in the Cup Series, which I think he absolutely deserves to go full-time in the Cup Series. I think it happens, and I think that Timmy Hill will drive in the Cup Series on a full-time basis with NBA Motorsports in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the 71 car for Colleg Racing. This car, I think, is going to be driven by a driver that unfortunately lost his ride in the Cup Series in 2021 at JT Doherty Racing. I think the 71 car is going to be driven by Ryan Priest. I think Ryan Priest has a potential chance to go to Colleg Racing in 2022 Nick Spinning, but I think that he's going to go back down to the Truck Series and work his way back up. Then he'll go back to Xfinity in 2023 and in, or 2024. And then in 2025, he'll officially finally, after a few years of trying to get back to Cup, I think he'll finally jump up to the Cup Series with Colleg Racing. And I think he'll be pretty successful. I think he's a really, really good driver. It's just the issue with him has been funny. But he has been talking to teams and probably has some sponsors that are trying to back him for next season. And I think that Ryan Priest will do very well when he does get back up to Cup Series. And I think that he will drive the 71 car for Colleg Racing in 2025. 
Up next, we're going to talk about the 77 car for Spire Motorsports. I expect Spire Motorsports to remain a two-car organization. I think they will still continue having a charter from Brickware Racing. I believe that they are going to end up getting a charter from Brickware Racing in 2022. And I think the driver that they are going to choose, this one's a little bit bold, but I think that Landon Castle is going to be driving a 77 for Spire Motorsports in 2025. The reason that I believe that Landon Castle will be the driver of this car is because Landon Castle is a Spire client. And I think that he potentially could go to the Truck Series team if being a Spire client. He also has that sponsor from Voyager, which I basically continue to back him going into next year. And I think eventually he will make it up back up to the Cup Series in the 77 car. And I think he'll be in the Cup Series with this team. I think he's a very, very talented driver who unfortunately got an unfair shake from the Sarcom stuff, and he was a JD Motorsports and didn't do extremely well, but of course, JD Motorsports really took a major step backwards this year, and it probably helped the fact that they had four cars. So I think he's eventually getting back in the 77 car for Spyro Motorsports, and I think he'll do very well with this team by this point. Up next, we're going to talk about the 78 car for Live Fast Motorsports. I think by this point, Live Fast Motorsports will remain a one-car operation in 2025 as a focus on this car. I think this car is only going to get better by 2025, though, and I do believe that the driver is still going to be continue being B.J. McLeod. However, I do believe that B.J. McLeod is going to run his final full-time season as a driver before fully transitioning into the ownership side of things, as B.J. McLeod is going to be in his 40s by this point. I think B.J. McLeod is a driver that is very underrated throughout his career, and a lot of guys look at him, and he's given guys potential opportunities to be racers in this respective series. And I do believe that B.J. McLeod is only going to continue driving this car through 2025. Probably won't run some of the other select tracks, depending on who he gets. Maybe you get guys like Scott Hecker, maybe other ro upcoming road course races like Andrew Ranger could get into this ride, perhaps. But I think he'll continue driving. And I also think potentially he could be another team that does go over to Dodge in the 2025 season. But I think he'll continue driving at least most of the season, and I think he continues driving the number 78 for Live Fast Motorsports in the 2025 season. Up next, we're going to talk about the 81 car for Junior Motorsports. I think Junior Motorsports is going to be a three-car team by 2025. I think that they are going to end up getting charters by 2023, jumping up to the Cup Series, and they will have multiple drivers. The first car, the 81 car, is going to be the official flagship car for Junior Motorsports, and I believe that this is going to be driven by Josh Barrett. Josh Berry is a driver that I think absolutely deserves to be back in the Cup Series. He's made a few select starts in the Cup Series in 2021. Had a pretty a couple decent runs, but of course he was inspired by sports equipment, so he wasn't able to really show what he was capable of. But I do believe that Josh Berry will be in the 81 with Junior Motorsports when he do officially go up to the Cup Series. Dale Jr. has been a big fan of Josh Berry's, and he helped Josh Berry really launch his career in Xfinity. I think he will be a championship contender in Xfinity in the next two years. And I think by 2023 or 2024, he'll be up in the Cup Series, and I think he'll be in the 81 car in 2025. Up next, we're going to talk about the second Junior Motorsports car, the 83 car. I believe this car is going to be driven by Sam Mayer. I think the Sam Mayer is going to work out the issues he had in 2021 by 2022. I think it's just he being really young. I think that's one reason he's been affected by it. But I believe the Sam Mayer will be in the Cup Series by 2025. I think the ultimate goal is to go to the Cup Series. And I think he would like to go to Hendrick Motorsports. However, I think Hendrick Motorsports is right now, unfortunately, going to be too filled out for him to go to. So I think he'll go with, to, with Junior Motorsports up to the Cup Series in 2025. But I think he gets in the 83 car by this point. It'll be around 23. He'll be around 22 years old by this point. I don't think he's going to be in Cup for a couple of years. I think he'll be too young to jump up the Cup in like two years. I think he'll be in the Cup Series by 2025, and he'll be with Junior Motorsports. Up next, we're going to talk about the final driver that's going to be in the Junior Motorsports Pipeline, the 88 car. And this car, I think, will be driven by Noah Grayson. This will be the guy that will start the team in 2023. I think Noah Grayson is jumping up to the Cup Series in 2023 with Junior Motorsports. I think he jumps up. Then we'll see Josh Berry jump up to Sam Mayer. But I think Noah Grayson is a driver that has done very, very well with Junior Motorsports equipment, especially in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. And I think he's a driver you can build around on and help your team out. I know the first years, first year or so he didn't win a race, and I know that the beginning of 2021 really didn't go well. But I think that some of the guys that are going up, going up to the Cup Series, I think he'd be a driver that really, really shines. I think he will drive the number 88 car, and I think he'll do very well in the Cup Series in the 2025 season. Up next, we're going to talk about the 94 car for GMS Racing. I do not expect any changes here. I think that Ty Dillon will continue driving the number 94 for GMS Racing. 
I think the first year or two, GMS Racing is a team that's going to kind of struggle to be a really, really fast and contending. But I think as time goes on, GMS Racing will continue to be more competitive, and they will expand. And Ty Dillon will still continue being that veteran driver that drives with their team, along with their RCR partnership that really is going to help them to start out. I'm really happy to see a Ty Dillon is going to be full-time in 2022, and I think that he will never leave the Cup Series again. And they really want to build around a Ty Dillon, which makes a lot of sense considering Ty Dillon is a driver who I think is still young enough and a driver to build around. He has some decent stats in Xfinity 2021, and I think he'll do very well in the Cup Series, as I believe that he will still continue driving the 94 for GMS Racing. Up next, we're going to talk about the 96 car for Gaunt Brothers Racing. I think Gaunt Brothers Racing is officially going to go back to full-time racing in the 2025 season, they're going to be a part-time team for a few years. And then in 2025, they're going to go back to being a full-time team. And I think the driver of the 96 is going to be none other than upcoming star Chandler Smith. Chandler Smith is a driver that I think is going to jump up to Xfinity by 2023. I think he makes part-time starts in 2022. Then goes full-time with Joe Gibbs Racing potentially in 2023. And I think Gombers Racing will have a much tighter relationship with the TRD pipeline. And I think he's going to become a driver at that organization. I think he is a generational star and a generational talent. And I think that he'll drive the 96 car. I think he's going to be eventually ready after the Cup Series. He'll be 23 by that point. So make 22 by that point. So he'll be a driver that's young enough to make it up, especially with the younger generation coming in. And I think he'll jump up to the Cup Series if Gone Brothers Racing. And the final number of team we'll talk about is the 99 for Trackhouse Racing. And Daniel Suarez, I believe, will continue driving the 99 for their organization. Daniel Suarez is the flagship driver. He's never leaving a team. And he's a driver that I think is going to get better in the Cup Series as time progresses and time goes on. I really like Daniel Suarez a lot. I think he knows what he's doing. And I think he'll do, he'll do really well. I think that Trackhouse Racing will only get better. I think they'll have a tighter partnership with the Chevy brand as they are moved into their chip and basically moved into the Chip Ganassi Racing Shop as their own identity. And Daniel Suarez, man, being having a team that basically runs around him, a team that's wrapped around, of course, also wrapped around Ross Chastain. And you never know, too, maybe they'll go to IndyCar if Daniel Suarez perhaps bring Trackhouse Racing IndyCar because we've been talking about them potentially going to IndyCar in the next couple of years. But I think that Daniel Suarez will continue driving with this team for a long time down the road, and he will be the driver of the 99 car for Trackhouse Racing going forward. So anyway, that is it for today. That is my official 2025 NASCAR Cup Series driver lineup. I want to thank guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on so you notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Let's go over with that and combo your driver lineups for the 2025 season. And do you think my driver lineup is crazy or not? Let me know in the comments below. I've got a lot of other special videos and products that are going to be dropping really, really soon on the channel as we are starting to progress toward Christmas. And I hope, like I said, hope you all had a happy Thanksgiving over the break. So anyway, like I said, I think I was watching today's video. I'll see you guys next time for some more great and awesome NASCAR content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.